Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Michael Boothby with Lovewise Media, and I am here with Mike Smith from the Mike Smith Group. Or is it is it just Mike Smith Group? There's no the. I no, there's no the. It's just Mike Smith. <laughs> okay. I'm here with Mike Smith from Mike Smith Group, and they just came out with their new album, Wall Kill Crisp. So first of all, Mike, how are you doing today, man? Pretty good, brother. I'm uh, enjoying. I had a really eventful weekend with the release weekend, so it ended up uh, draining me energetically. So I'm still on the on the back end of recovery here. So nice. So, you guys, you guys play some play some gigs. Yeah, we played down at uh, John and Peters in New Hope, Pennsylvania, Friday night, and then I went out and I was a uh, a rare moment of going to see some music on Saturday. So mm, I'm just tired. love that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you for joining me, man. I, I really appreciate it. So, yeah, I mean, just to kick things off, you know, what inspired the title Wall Kill Crisp? And are there any overarching themes or me messages you aim to convey through this album? Basically, the, this album and the way that it's come to be is, is uh, it was an amalgamation of songs that I just have had written for the last two years of the band being together, and we'd never done anything in a true studio fashion with a tight, you know, three to four minute song format. Um, and that's a challenge for me because we're usually just a live band. So the, 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 the challenge of the album was to fit it into that specific category of time while also uh, not making the song sound too flat. So um, the songs were seven songs I had written between, I would say 2019 and 2022 and finishing touches were put on last year and then we got into the studio in march and Heck yeah. got very lucky to blast them out in, a, in about three and a half days time and then about a day's worth of editing so um nice and then the name walk hill crisp is an inside joke of, between all of us where uh, my bass player and my drummer live up in connecticut so when they come down to visit me i live in a very rural area in new jersey so it's, it's very, it's, you, it's like driving into a nature preserve and you're just in the back. Room. So Evan wakes up one morning, Evan's the bass player. He wakes up and he goes, there's nothing like a crisp morning on Lake Walk Hill. And it's just been like this inside joke for over a year and a half. And he just goes, well, what if we called the album Walk Hill Crisp? And, and then the fact that it's, it's ambiguity kind of fits in like, what is Walk Hill Crisp? <laughs> like it could be fucking anything you want it to be. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. I love that. That was my first question. What is a wall kill, Chris? But I love that inside joke. That's super fun. Um, yeah. So, how have your your previous musical experiences or influences um, shaped the sound and direction of this album? So, I've been very lucky to see a lot of music in my life. Uh, I've gotten to see a lot of different types of music too. So not just like one solid form of uh, like just rock and roll or just like any rap. I've seen a lot of different types of stuff. And I'd like to think that all of that has worked its way into my songwriting in one way or another. I, I take influence from everything that I go to see. And uh, it's... I try the hardest to just sound like me at the end of the day. Uh, and this album, I think, stayed pretty true to that. It's like we, we explored so many different types of styles because I listen, again, like uh, I'm a big country music guy. I'm a big like old school hard rock fan. So like all these themes will find their way into my songwriting. And like I said before, it's just all these things were floating around in my head. And this was a chance for me to organize them and get them out and then have something on paper. Hmm. Yeah, I love that because I, I, you know, my girlfriend and I listened to the album last night and I really I heard so many different influences. And I want to I want to jump to this uh, question next, because the other thing that really that I really felt while listening to this album and my girlfriend agreed is like, you really were able to capture this like beautiful live sound in the studio like when i listened to the album i really felt like i was at a festival and i was like whoa who's that they're jamming they're singing there's ripping solos um so yeah i just wanted to ask you like how are you able to translate that live energy so well into your studio recordings well 
the way that we went about to try and do that is is a pretty cool way. That's that's getting into like the actual recording aspect of the album. So like what we did is we recorded everything at first with the scratch tracks. Um, but with the intentions of the scratch tracks being the finalized tracks for the rhythm parts. So all the drums and the bass are all done in one shot for the most part. If we didn't like it, we tried it again. So nothing ever went past four or five takes, but we, we, we played it until we liked the way that it sounded. Myself, I was separated in, in the control room with our producer, Jamie Simpson, and through a series of real time back and forth, they were able to hear exactly what I was playing with all the speakers and guitars upstairs. And then we, we essentially just did a live recording of the drums and the bass. And then I took all of the scratch tracks for guitar and re-recorded all the guitar stuff on a separate day. So gotcha. effectively we did capture a somewhat live feel. And then I just put it more through a studio process because I wanted to always like, again, we're effectively, we are a live band. We do so right. much digging that it's 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 hard to not it's hard for that not to come through because we do we do two hour and twenty minute sets each night most nights. Wow, so it's uh it's 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 hard for that not to peek through and even the songwriting aspect. Uh, yeah, but no, that's they, that's awesome. That's like because again, it really comes through in, in in the best way, you know. And it's like exactly I've seen some bands like like i don't know they're they're really this band is really sticking out to me when i was younger i really loved the band interpol i don't know if you've listened to them yeah and they're so great on their albums but i saw them live and like they were kind of boring they right. kind of always like man i kind of would rather just listen to their album and and just live it just they didn't have a lot of energy all right here's the next song here's the next song and um so yeah i just i really loved how you're able to to to, to bring that live vibe to the studio and even into your process like i mean it's it's that's so authentic it's it's you are you are who you are and so i love that um let's go let's go a little bit deeper into kind of that your creative process though you know like can you can you walk me through your process uh for creating a song you know for example how did uh come on the, the you know the opening track of that uh of the album come to life so that was that's actually one of the newer tracks that i've written in in recent times so my writing process has changed significantly over the years just just by learning different ways on how my brain works and becoming more in tune with myself as a writer. Um, so I, as a day job, I drive a lot. So I find myself in the car humming to myself half the time. And I'll come up with these, these lines, melody lines, or a thought on a, a word or, or, or a sentence that I think could be potentially something. And in, in my phone, I'll have a whole list of notes and I'll talk to text right into my phone. And if, it, if it's like a line or a baseline or something, I'll use a voice chat, throw that on the on there. And then once I'm able to get back into the studio, I'll effectively come together with a rough cut of what I want it to sound like. I'll figure out all the guitar parts. I'll present it to the boys. And then the way that we work as a unit is I don't I don't tell them what to do. They are, right. they are professionals in what they are doing. I only work with killers and these dudes know what they're doing. So I let them just go free. And then at the end of the day, we'll have a tightened up version of what we want the song to sound like and where it should end and what we should do. And like, in come on, there's that little, uh, or I'm sorry, in our other track, no bond, no bail, there's that break where that wasn't, there's this, that wasn't in the track at all until we thought we need just something a little spicier. So we just yeah. added that little four bar break and it was that changed the whole song up. But for like, come on specifically, I found myself just messing around on my guitar, playing a riff and drop D one day. And I was like, Ooh, that could be like a cool 12 bar blues type of thing. Cause I was raised as a blues guitarist. I'm always going to go for the blues. And I added some extra gain to it and, added some layers and bada boom bada bing <laughs> yeah I, found, uh, I wrote a song <laughs> Just yeah not on the other side but there was a there was a fully complete song at the end of it 
<laughs> yeah. No, I love that. I feel I feel the same for me. You know, I'm also a songwriter. It's it's so often I feel like driving is really where those those melodies or those lines come to you. And I'm the same. I'll just like make a quick recording, and then when I have more time, go back and okay, what is this really about? Or adding a, a few more bars or melodies, just as a chorus or verse, and just just fleshing it out. I don't know what it is. I think it's something about driving. It's like I really do think it gets us into that that meditative state. Exactly. And then that's once we're in that meditative state, that's where the inspiration comes. Where it comes from, couldn't tell you. <laughs> but but you there it the is. You are the vessel for something much greater, my friend. That's mm. all you can say. That's it. Yeah. And uh, and on that on that note, I mean, is there any track on Wall Kill Crisp that you know that stands out to you personally, and why? Like, you know, which is your favorite track? If you had to pick one, I know that's so hard. <laughs> that is, that's a tough one because they're all like really deeply personal to me. Every mm. every song has has a story behind it. It's written about something that's happened to me in my life. Uh, you know, I mean, to a degree, in 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 the how things started to how they're going term. And, you know, uh, I really really am happy with how Laundry came out on the album because it started out as just kind of like a song that I had written about a situation that I had witnessed from a third person point of view had no skin in the game whatsoever, but I realized that it was just a silly thing that, well, not a silly thing. It was a pretty serious fucking thing, but, uh, it still, it, it, it ruined a person's image when again, I didn't even know the person that well, but I had enough weight in the game to like write a song about it. Cause it was just an observational standpoint. It's crazy to watch somebody, put all of their shit out on the internet. And it's something that I see happen way too much in my life. Um, it's just something that happens too much in today's society. But uh, <laughs> so like laundry had started out as just this throwaway tune and it turned into once we did the rough, tr even when we did the rough tracking for it on the album, I was just like, this is, it's okay. It's all right. And then we went in to redo all the guitars and I still did all the guitars and laid it down. I was like, oh, that's fine. It's cool. And then we came back for solo day. And after I did that lead line over the top of it and just added some extra flourishes and it just, it came to life in a way that I was not expecting. And even like all the guys at the end, they're like, wow, we, that was, that was a fucking throwaway. And it turned into a, a killer tune, a really killer tune. Mm. But in terms of like my favorite my favorite to write was No Bond, No Bail. There's a lot of fun in that, and it's a really fun vehicle for playing. Uh, mm. Come On's fun because that's just like, that's our heaviest tune, and that's a, something I'm exploring more in our songwriting is something going a little bit lower in my tunings and that type of stuff. Uh, and then I've got the Core 4, which is basically what started the band, and that's what's all on our original live EP that we cut uh, two years ago. And uh, those songs are all great in their own right, too, because they're a lot of fun to play. But uh, in terms of my favorites, I'm really liking where my songwriting's leading these days. So I'm really happy with the newer stuff. That's awesome. I you know, love it. You're exploring Drop D. I feel like Drop D is I was super into those drop tunings when, when I was younger, right? Because I love Tool. I love System of a Down. And a lot of System of a Down is actually in Drop C. So it's oh, yeah. even lower, which is why it sounds so heavy. I think even... um. The band Chevelle too. They play in Drop C, and I know their their lead singer actually, Paul Reed Smith, made him a baritone guitar so right. it would stay in tune. And I was always just like, you know, <laughs> it's so fun. I have, <laughs> I haven't played in Drop D in, in in so long, but that's that's awesome. That you know exactly you're starting to explore, open up that fretboard a bit. Um, I'm adding in, I'm adding in a lot more because I played in a lot of like heavier hardcore and like pop punk type stuff when I was younger in my teens and in my early twenties and then that just that bit went by the wayside and I went to where my 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 uh, my heart truly lied was in is in the blues and rock and roll mm. where I've always been and I love that stuff still but it just wasn't it wasn't translating for me playing it live right. Mm. So this this is something where I can I can be me. I, I am putting all of me on the paper and this is my sound. This is what I do. This is I don't care you know, at the end of the day, this is I don't care what anyone thinks. I'm gonna do my sound and this is I'm not altering it. It's like, oh if you're a little too loud, I'm sorry, this is what you hired. You know, this right. is me. 
You know, like uh, this is I'm not turning the amps down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're you're this is you that you're being authentic, right? So I, I I I do a lot online about, you know, preaching authenticity and and help people exploring, you know, their most authentic self. So I I love to hear that. Love to hear it and see it. Um so so yeah, just since um since you started, since the release, you know, how are how are kind of fans reacting to this album or any fans this weekend from your gigs? How, you know? It's been overwhelming, actually. Like, uh, I'm, I went into this not in, expecting anything whatsoever. Like, I, I did this so I could get these songs out of my head and on paper so I could start working on the next project. <laughs> and people have been coming up to me and texting me and messaging me nonstop. And it's like, my heart is very full, man. <laughs> it's so great. Like, uh, I, I was even just checking the daily stats today. Like, the album's already had over 250 streams, which I wasn't even wow. expecting. And that's... Uh, that's a huge number for me because, like, yeah, we got like, I play in little bars and shit like that. So it's like really cool to mm. see as many people as I've seen supporting me and reaching out to me. And I I went out to a concert on Saturday night and people were coming up to me left and right saying they love the album. I'm like, yo, get the hell out of here. We're here to see somebody else. <laughs> this is so. Uh, it's it. It makes a very confident guy very shy. So it's like very, <laughs> very cool. I it's love that. Cool. I love that. I'm I'm definitely I'm one of those 250 streams. We streamed it last night. Really enjoyed it. Um, and so yeah, just following Wall Kill Crisp. You know, what are the future plans for Mike Smith Group? Are there any tours, new projects, or collaborations in the pipeline? So we've got a whole bunch of dates coming up. The month of June is incredibly busy for us. I haven't even announced half of the dates yet, but uh, we're going to be playing in Brooklyn. We're going to be back in New Hope, Pennsylvania, opening up for uh, The Adventures of Matt Black at Dharma Bones. Uh, we are going to be, holy hell, where are we going to be back at? <laughs> it's a very busy month, and I, I don't even have everything down yet. So uh, uh, the plan is for us to, you know, just, we're going to, my, my goal is a lot less gig-oriented in 2024 and 2025, because I spent, between the years, we started making a comeback after COVID. So like 2021, 22 started light gigging, coming back. Uh, once we really started Mike Smith group was 2021. Uh, between that and 2023, we played very close to a hundred gigs. And when you're playing and not making a lot of money, that's just a stressful thing on you. Like it's, it, I went into it without really a plan. I was like, go play the music. Somebody's going to listen and like, yeah, that's gung ho and everything. It's really cool to, to go out and be a road dog. But if you're not doing anything, it's not making anything. In right. reality sense, it's not a smart plan. So, uh, and after, it's a whole long story, but the, that I'll tell you off camera. The story for No Bond, sure. No Bail is a funny one. But uh, after sure, that sure. happened, I had a very, very tight mental breakdown. It was great. Uh, it was last mm -hmm. August, and I reevaluated everything I was doing as a musician. I was very close to even saying, like, this is this is, this is it. I'm just – it's not doing it for me. I'm not having fun. It's, it's kill. Yeah, it's kill. It's like, why, why would I want to go out and just, like, play to five people in a bar? And these people don't give a shit. Uh, so I reevaluated everything I was doing. And came to the conclusion that if I was going to continue with this, I needed to actually be a songwriter and stop being, I said this years ago, I need to stop playing as many covers as I do and start writing the things that are in my head down because the beast inside me is tearing me from the inside out. Uh, and the only way to satisfy the beast is to get the ideas out of your head. It's like the parasites in me. Well, yeah, exactly. Beautiful thing. Parasites in me need the songs out. So. It's true. It's true. I, I, I really do believe in the uh, the transformational or maybe even trans transmutation, perhaps is a better word. Uh, the transmute the transmutational quality of art, of, of creativity and in making music. And I'm exactly the same as just all of the songs I've written. Most of the songs I've written in my life were because I was really struggling with something. And I didn't have, I didn't really have people in my life who, um, who could help me with it. And so I helped myself with it and I, and I turned them into songs. I turned something that was either dark or sad that hurt me, 
um, into something beautiful or something, or maybe it's also dark, but now it's also, it's something that instead of being this thing that hurt me, it's now a sweet song that's stuck in my head. And hey, if it gets stuck in your head, cool, but it's not about you, right? It's about, it's about you. It's about, it's about me. And, and I don't know why that's happening. <laughs> Thumbs up. The best art is made for yourself that other people can relate to. Exactly. Um, exactly. And in terms of like this album and like where we're going. So like, like I said, we're going to, we're definitely like less gig oriented because of that breakdown that I had. Uh, June is very busy, but like, I'm still trying to keep it to like 25, 30 gigs in 2024 for the entirety of the year. And that's like, cause I'm focusing on our next step is we're already planning our next session to, with, uh, ba, 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 ba. we're planning our next session with, uh, our producer, Jamie. Awesome. He's been, he, was, he was great to work with. So we, we, we think we're just going to do the same type of plan, but because of some gear upgrades in his, his world, he is now able to offer a mobile recording aspect. So we're going to be doing it at a on location and potentially a much longer session. So like a location where we can all stay in the same place and we can wake up and work for five days straight all sorts of wild shit will be like this or that i want the next project because this was just all the songs on walk hill chris were written by me except for the music where the boys wrote their pieces where i don't touch that but all the guitar all the lyrics that's all me for this next one i want to be able to explore songwriting with the bulls i want to see what that can bring where we can go with that uh, Evan and I also play in an acoustic duo, so we, we've we've messed around with some different ideas. Uh, Evan's also brought some songs to the table. I know Dakota probably has some some stuff in the back that he can figure out too that could be some nice tunes. Uh, the next project I really want to be able to say it's a group effort rather than it being the Mike's you know it's a Mike Smith album. It's Mike right. Smith group album, you know. Uh, that's really, and we're, we're shooting to do that this fall. I really like to do two albums in a year because that's ambitious and old school and we have the ability and the technology. I've got some ideas in the mill right now. I was just working on something this morning before we got on the, on the horn here. So mm. I, uh, that's the goal. I'm not pushing it though. Like if it happens in the winter, cool. If it happens in earlier winter, cool. Uh, I know that we have a location opportunity I believe in November and that's going to be a free location in a very large home. So, uh, might roll with that. But again, if I don't have enough tunes to make the album work, I'm not going to push it. But yeah. also if I go in there with four and we can write three more and put out another seven track album, like that's fine by me. That's a record. Like who? Exactly. I'm, I'm not one of those people that like, Oh, it has to be more than a half hour. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm used to a 15 minute, 17 song album, you know, like, it's, uh, yeah. it's, that's, 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 so that's, that's our next move is like, we're, we're going to stick to, we're not going to turn down any gigs that we're given if they're, you know, realistically, if they're equitable enough, because as a, being a touring band in 2024 is damn near impossible unless you, you're able to fund it on your own. Right. Uh, so we're not going to turn down any gigs. I'm, I, but I'm going to be realistic. I, I, if it, if it don't work out financially, unfortunately that's, I gotta be that way, but it's, I'm at the point where I can do that now. So yeah. I, I'm also, I'm just realistic without being pompous. So it, cause it, it can, it can get like, you know, you can't be like, Oh, I deserve all this. I don't deserve shit. But if you're right. willing to pay the funds, that's where the band will, will absolutely right. show up because business wise, I have a good setup with my guys now. We're starting to move into a spot where we're, you know, we're doing better work in some better rooms and like things will be reevaluated and the, the whole business aspect, we're all new to it. Right. So it's I, I, my, my goal is to keep my brothers in arms as happy as possible for Cause like, it's at the end of the day, like it's, it's all under my name, the business, everything is, is my name. So at the end of the day, we're all just, we are all just word i'm looking for we're, mm. we're just shit representatives <laughs> of myself mm. so at the end of the day is like these guys don't have as much weight in the game possibly but they do because they put in the energy they put in the time and they don't mind 
the name thing. That's never been a problem. It's like right. actually Dakota, our drummer, suggested it. Like because we were trying to come up with all these different names. Like what could we yeah. go to? We had an old band called Pandemonium, and that was a great band. But we were moving on to where I wanted to write some more original stuff and do my own thing. He's like, after like a year of trying to figure out a name, he just goes, why don't we just call it Mike Smith something? And I came yeah. up with a group idea because at first it was uh, it's really fun to rip off Madison Square Garden's logo. Always <laughs> great to do some like, you know, sure. early on. But uh, it just it just felt right because it wasn't an experience. Yeah. More than a band. Yeah. So. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah. And then just just finally, you know, if, if there's, you know, if anyone's watching this, maybe they're a musician, creator, um, you know, maybe they're stuck in a nine to five and they're watching this and they're like, man, Mike Smith, he's he's doing it and he's really authentic. So I guess just, just do you have any final words for 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 anyone watching this about just how to live your most authentic life and 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 to create from that that deep place within you so the main thing to try and do is just to never stop because when you stop it's a lot harder to open the gate back up because you get comfortable with being comfortable with stuff after a while and the discomfort pushes you through the hardest of things and it, it, I'm, I'm throwing like 15 cliches around, but like you literally have to go through it to do it. So like if you're working a nine to five, keep playing. If you're having a rough time in life, keep playing. Like you just never stop playing. Like I, I work a day job. I, I have a, a very, let's say tough, but it's like I have a nine to five day job that requires me to work nights and work days. And like I'm all over the place. I drive five, six hours a day sometimes. And thankfully I'm able to use that time effectively to write my music. So like, it's, it's all about, it's, if you want to do it, it's about really wanting to do it. It's the same thing as like quitting smoking cigarettes or quitting drinking. If you want to do it, you'll do it. And mm -hmm. as long as you never stop doing it, you're always going to be in tune with that, that thing. Like I, I, Sometimes it ain't me writing. I, I, don't, I don't attribute it to any higher power or anything like that, but I like to think that I'm a vessel for something greater than myself every once in a while. It's, it's like mm -hmm. the world is much bigger than us. So like maybe I am writing something down from some other place. I don't know. Maybe it's, I don't know. Sometimes it ain't me. Sometimes it ain't me. But like the, the main thing is to just never stop. Never stop creating. Keep your brain spark going. And... Eat good food. That's another big one. Eat good food, exercise, and the good things will keep your brain moving in a positive and creative manner. Mm, I love that. I love that. Well, Mike, this has been an amazing conversation, dude. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for coming on. Um, and, and yeah, everyone watching this, go check out wall kill crisp it's out on every streaming platform it's a banger of an album it has that live energy mike smith put his love into this album so check it out and and check out mike smith group this summer they're only doing 25 to 30 gigs this year so if they're coming to your town check them out mike again thank you so much for joining me and everyone you know we'll catch you next time